I assume then that if somebody wants to smoke marijuana, that's their business that's too. That's his business, absolutely. Uh, are we going to take that to heroin and addiction? Absolutely. Now, there, let me go back on that one, because that's a very interesting thing. Even if on ethical principles you believe it is right to prevent somebody else from smoking heroin, as a matter of expediency, it's a terrible mistake. The largest... And so is jumping off the bridge. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean it's a terrible mistake for society to, to... render heroin illegal, because that oh. increases the harm which heroin does. Why do we have so much crime in the inner cities and in the cities? Over 50% of it is attributed to crime uh, for the sake of acquiring money to buy heroin. Because Why is heroin goes. so expensive? Because it's illegal. We went through this with prohibition. Whether you believe it's right or wrong to prevent people from drinking alcohol, we had the experience with prohibition in which we found that it did more harm than good. And a lot of guys got shot in the garage. A lot of guys got shot in the... the uh, more important, the basic respect for law was eroded. Law-abiding people who would never ordinarily have broken the law broke the law in order to get a drink. Because they knew that the, that the law enforcement agencies could not possibly enforce with any efficiency the laws against uh, the, law, uh, the prohibition law. But the reason they couldn't enforce it was because it wasn't publicly backed. If the 90% of the public had been in favor of the prohibition law, you could have enforced it. But I'm promising you 90% of the public right now is in favor of uh, enforcing prohibition against heroin. And you cannot enforce it. I agree. I was understating my case. Even with 90% of the people, you can't enforce it. And it does vastly more harm today because it is illegal than it would do if it were legal. Let me point out for a moment that more lives are lost each year through drinking alcohol than through heroin. But uh, one if there's a case, if you're going to make the case for pre preventing heroin on the basis of saving lives, there's a much stronger case for prohibition of alcohol. Uh, but that there would be some who would argue that to, uh, to relax law enforcement or to take away law enforcement pressure on heroin trade is to ensure that heroin deaths will meet and exceed alcohol deaths. On the contrary, it would reduce the number of heroin deaths. <clears throat> Why would it reduce the number of heroin deaths? In the first place, many of the deaths comes, come from impure or adulterated uh, heroin or uh, needles that are contaminated. In the second place, as we found in prohibition, the fact of prohibition encouraged alcoholism rather than the opposite. To the young people in particular, it became an adventure to go out and get drunk, to go to a speakeasy. Today, with heroin illegal, it pays a heroin pusher to create an addict. Because, given that it's illegal, if he, it's worth his while to spend some money on getting somebody else hooked. Because once hooked, he has a captive audience. Mm -hmm. If heroin were readily available <coughs> everywhere, it wouldn't pay anybody to create an addict. Because the f addict could then go anywhere to buy it. <coughs> you have had experience with this. Britain has had legalized, not heroin in general, but they have had an arrangement under which certified addicts can get heroin from uh, 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 physicians on prescription. I assume. And it's done very much less harm than our system has. So I have no apologies for believing that far less harm would be done to this country by legalizing heroin than is now being done by trying to enforce heroin uh, prohibition. I assume like the baby in the car, you would uh, support legislation prohibiting the sale of heroin and other addictive uh, substances to uh, juveniles. Well, that's a very hard question. I think it is a, there is a different case for juveniles. But whether you could really handle the question, that's a question of expediency, not a principle. If I thought I could enforce it, I would be willing to say that for juveniles. But I'm not sure I could enforce it, and I'm not sure when I looked into it, I wouldn't decide I did more harm than good even there. You'll agree that this is the issue that lays bare. I the think whole so. notion of your personal statement, and this is where we get to the practical realities of sweat and blood, everyday life with parental anxiety. Where are my kids? What are those sirens? Who's selling what to whom? What are they doing in the car? Who's sniffing, smoking, drinking? What is happening out there? And for all of the adulation that you've received, standing ovations everywhere you go, this is a very difficult platform for you to uh, I don't speak believe from. so I don't believe so because I believe it corresponds to the real understanding and interests and beliefs oh, okay. of the vast majority of the American people I think okay. uh -huh. that you have to distinguish 
between the attitudes of the public at large and the attitudes of a relatively small group of people who have been trying to persuade the public to have different views. I, I know that, Dr. Friedman. And, uh, Look at prohibition. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am. It didn't work. Okay, it didn't and work. And why did you get it adopted in the first place? If the people in this audience who are predominantly female will pardon me, it was only adopted because the young males were away in France during World War I, and, and the women were. of the country voted in Prohibition. <laughs> Now, that's neither good nor bad. It's a pure statement of historical fact. Yeah. The irony, though, let's not, let's not miss the irony here. The irony is that you are the darling of the conservative, or, the, uh, to, of almost, is there anybody left who doesn't think we have too much government? And you are as eloquent a spokesman against that abuse as there is walking around today. You are also on record as supporting the candidacy of uh, Ronald Reagan. Yes, indeed. Do I have to tell you what happens to Ronald Reagan's candidacy if he so much as breeds agreement to the statements you've just made about drugs? Well, fortunately, one of the great virtues of being a college professor is that you can say exactly what you believe and what you mean. I'm not running for office. I've never run for office. I have no desire to run for office. And so uh, I regard it as a great luxury that I can be irresponsible. <laughs> we'll be back with you.